Hey guys, Woods Farm here. Just back working on the Kubel Wagon, part 61. Done a few little odds and sods since the last video. Worked on the dash and uh, transferring all the electrical components underneath the dash just to get ready to wire it up. Uh, played around with that. I don't know if uh, the last video showed the headlights, but I got the headlights mounted. Anyways, um, right now I'm just uh, moving ahead with trying to get this thing driving so we can take it out for a test drive. Um, so a few things have to happen. Uh, gas tank's got to go in. Obviously the engine's got to go in. I'm debating on whether I'm just going to slam it in there or I'm going to actually uh, test start it, you know, adjust the carburetor and stuff um, outside of the, off the vehicle. And then, you know, once I know the engine's running properly, then install it. Um, so we'll see. And uh, one of the things I'm going to work on today is this muffler. This is not a stock Volkswagen thing muffler. This is some sort of aftermarket thing. Now, uh, I'm going to put a proper muffler on this thing down the road. Uh, Kubel Wagons would have had a dual exhaust setup, uh, similar to a, the 73 thing. Um, no heater boxes. So I'd like to go down that route eventually, but for now I just need some sort of a muffler. Now, I'm tempted to just paint this thing black with high heat paint and go for it, but it's got these stupid, goofy looking dual exhaust pipes. And they're starting to rot out. This is where the vehicle was touching the ground and uh, they're rotted out. So I think it'll look a little a little more subdued if I just have a straight tailpipe coming out each side. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these off and weld on uh, some tailpipe and then I'm going to clean all the rust off of it and paint it and call it a day. I went ahead and started a new to-do list, kind of breaking down all the steps, what has to happen. Obviously engine, weld up the muffler, paint the muffler. I need to make some sort of a temporary back seat, uh, gas tank, battery box. I gotta paint the battery box. Wiring, uh, the speedometer, uh, painting and markings. I got some stencils that I'm working on to do some um, period of correct markings. Uh, so those are all things that need to happen. Okay, that's what it looks like all finished up a lot better which is the two simple tailpipes. I think that'll look a lot better on the back of the uh, Kubel wagon. Okay, there's the fuel tank. So now I just need to work on the fuel line. So there's a fitting at the bottom of the tank and I have to get a fuel line through the firewall and up into this area and that's where I've got the uh, fuel filter and then the line goes um, into the tunnel and back to the engine. Got some fittings. Um, part of me wants to just go with this barb fitting directly into the tank. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck. This is National Pipe Thread. Um, that's what the tank comes equipped with. They, the place where I bought the tank, they sell their own fittings. I didn't get them. Um, they're pretty standard, but I haven't had a lot of luck with pipe these types of fittings um, with fuel. Um, there's not really a type of sealant you can use. You know, with water you can put on a thread sealant, but with fuel it just eats through anything. But I mean, the gas tank company. That's the type of fitting they provide on the bottom of the tanks, so I don't know. I'm going to go with it. Um, I'm not 100% confident that this isn't going to leak. So to me, the, the the simplest and obviously the least likely to leak is just a fitting like this going right to the fuel line. Because it's only one one spot can fail, really. You know. Um, usually these rubber, when you put the hose on the barb fittings, they're usually pretty good. But it's the fuel that bleeds past the threads. But, I would like a shutoff valve. So, to do that I need 
I need to be set up like this, right? And that's one, two, three threaded joints instead of just one. So I'm gonna try it, worst case I can backtrack and I can just put on a barb fitting. But let's cross our fingers and hopefully this doesn't leak. Okay, so I got some work to do on the engine from the last time I pulled it off. Um, gotta throw the belt on it, uh, carburetor, um, get the uh, spark plug wires all set up, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna do that, I gotta clean it off, it's pretty dusty. It's been sitting for over a year. Okay, another thing I have to do here is uh, add a couple more pieces of engine tin that I, I kind of left off and forgot about. These go underneath and uh, just make sure they just keep more air going over the cylinder heads. Um, I should know this, but I don't really know what these are for. Um, I think they supply air to the heater boxes. Um, I believe that there's a different type of uh, engine tin which had a hole here and there was a vent would come down and go through and go to the heater box, I think. But if you know, if you're watching this video and you have an idea, uh, let me know. Um, obviously the answer's out there. Just gotta research it. I know they make covers for these that you can close them off, which leads me to believe that I don't need them and I can probably close them off and that should actually send more, force more air over the engine, which is what I want. So if you know, let me, give me a shout, leave a comment. So the lower um, studs for the exhaust, they were sketchy. And uh, sure enough, it just stripped out. So I'm trying to re-tap it. Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna work. We're gonna take a chance. Okay, that's better. Okay, so with the help of my wife and daughter, we've got the uh, engine in, got all the bolts on. So I just gotta button things down and put the bumper bar back on and start uh, wiring this thing up, fuel line, throttle cable, that kind of stuff. Okay, so the next step's the wiring. Um, I had everything laid out before, but obviously I don't remember what I'd come up with. Uh, I have this kind of rat's nest of wires that I designed, so I'm just trying to put the puzzle back together and figure this out. So the setup I have is uh, the power, the positive power comes directly from the battery and goes straight to the starter and then everything jumps off from there. And then there's another set of wires that come out from the uh, generator 
and go to the voltage regulator. Right now I've got the voltage regulator mounted on the uh, rear firewall on the inside. Um, a lot of times this is mounted in the engine compartment, um, but this is what I've got set up. So obviously it can always get upgraded down the road, but for now we just gotta get uh, functional. Okay, so it's about 2.30 in the morning and uh, I've just been working on this electrical for the last couple hours, chasing gremlins. Um, I had a pretty good idea of how to put it back together. I had all the puzzle pieces. I'm still not 100% what's going on underneath the dash but I've got things set up now where it seems to be working. I had problems for like an hour and a half. I was just going in circles and uh, I was, I blew a fuse and the starter was just clicking and sometimes I would lose power altogether. Um, I think part of the problem was the ground. Um, and uh, I don't know, I added looked at another diagram and there, I think there's supposed to be a gra ground going from here grounding out wherever this is attached to the chassis I don't know if that's helping but it seems to be working consistently now so I'm thinking I got it figured out one of those situations though where you try the same thing you, know, you try something different and then you try it you go back and then it works so you kind of you get stuck in this loop but we'll see. So I've got the engine pretty much all set up. I've got the throttle cable attached. I've got fuel. Uh, the fuel lines hooked up and I just started it. It was running. I don't, it doesn't appear to be leaking fuel. Uh, it's been sitting. That was what I was really concerned with. And uh, I don't see anything. It doesn't seem to be beating up at all or, you know, sweating. So that's good because that's inside the vehicle. So, and then the, I got the tire back on, but the fuel line goes under here. There's a filter under there. There might be a slight little bit of moisture around the one part of the filter, but I won't know until the morning or check it in a few hours you know but like I said it's been 20 minutes half an hour since I've had gas in the tank nothing yet so that's good so yeah I'm gonna work on a couple other odds and ends here but uh, at some point I'm gonna have to go to bed but it's gonna be pretty hard to sleep because you know I wanna it potentially can test drive this in daylight I am so tempted to pull it out of the garage right now, but uh, it's dark outside and I just don't want to crash this thing. So I don't know what's going on exactly with the clutch, uh, the brakes, everything, all the systems are untested right now. So I'd rather kind of roll it out of the garage and have some space to test it. Okay, it's the next morning. No leaks, that's good. Okay, that's it. Brakes are a little spongy, squishy, whatever you want to call it. Um, they need to be adjusted. I don't know if I need, maybe I need new brake drums. Uh, I could try bleeding them again. Engine seems to be running okay. Um, I'm gonna adjust the carburetor a bit more, play around with it, I think.
Okay, that was the first test drive. Um, couple issues. I got to work on the carburetor. I got to do some research. It's uh, I played around with it. I think I made it worse. It's a little gutless. Um, it lacks power, so I got to look into that. Uh, issue number two, the brakes are still a little squishy. Um, so I got to play around with that. Um, maybe bleed them again. Adjust them. See if I can get them to be, be a little more responsive. And issue number three is the um, transmission combination between the transmission and the clutch. Uh, the clutch I th is working. I think I need to adjust it. I had it loose and then I adjusted it tighter and I don't know. It felt like at one point I got out in the field and I just couldn't get moving again. It was like I was stuck in third gear. Um, that said, first gear also feels very fast. Um, it doesn't have a lot of torque. And I'm wondering if I'm starting in third gear. Um, I played around with this. I tried to adjust the position of the uh, stick. Um, there's not really much adjustment at the linkage there. But I'm not 100% that I'm always getting into first gear. Um, aside from that, um, the basic electrical is sorted out. And uh, it starts pretty easily. Um, if you choke it, it starts right up. Even with the carburetor out of adjustment. I've got the um, generator hooked up to the best of my ability with the voltage regulator. Um, the battery is showing 12.5, 12.3, something like that. And then with the car running, it's like 12.5. One five. I'm more used to alternators, so I, it should be charging at a higher voltage. But that's for alternators. I'm not really sure how generators work. And when the car is running, the the reading is kind of fluctuating. It drops down for a second and then goes back up. Drops down. I've noticed that on my tractor, and the tractor seems to be just fine. Um, so. I, we'll, we'll see if the battery goes dead. I might have to revisit that and kind of play around with the wiring. Anyways, two years. It's been a long time coming, but, uh, you know, I finally have a vehicle that I can drive around. It still needs quite a bit of work. Um, a lot of detail stuff. A lot of the electrical needs to get sorted out for lights. Uh, that kind of stuff for the safety. New windshield canopy top, um, all the kind of accoutrements, rifle rack, jerry can racks, all that kind of stuff. But I'll be working on that this winter slowly. But the, me the main thing is I have something that's pretty much usable um, and I can drive it around. I had it out on the road, had it up to about uh, 35 kilometers um, in second gear and was just motoring along. So very happy. Anyways, any comments, questions, uh, leave them below. Any ideas of how to deal with the, um, the transmission, the brakes, and to a lesser extent, the carburetor, uh, leave, leave a comment below. As always, uh, thanks for watching.